Hi, it's Noisy Andrew here with my Seafarers beanie because it's a bit chilly this morning here in Western Australia. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the people that have asked me questions about Dive, Dive, Dive. Um, as an amateur designer, I get an idea and I get excited about it and I put it together and then I test it with some friends and it doesn't work the way I want it to. And then maybe a few months later or sometime later, I think of something that might be the reason why it didn't work the way I wanted it to and I apply that and then I badger my friends again. Um, and this is one of those games. Um, if you look on the Geek, you'll find it's been played a few times by a few people. Um, not, not all my friends log their games, but there's, there's a few plays. Um, I'm not even sure it works, but the only way you find out is getting other people to play it. So the people that have printed it out and tried it, um, thank you. That's, um, that's, that's, that's how I got Country Trains working. Criticism from the Geek is like a very helpful thing. Anyway, a few people have said they're having trouble understanding the rules. Um, and like all my games, the rules are only two pages long. That's like something I set myself. Um, so the game has to A, not be too complicated, and B, I have to try and write the rules as efficiently as possible. And maybe in this case, this is a little too complicated for that actual criteria. But anyway, let's look at how I intend the game to work and hopefully this will help some people understand it. Okay, let's look at what you print out when you print out um, the files for Dive, Dive, Dive. So we have our, um, how do I forget the name? We have our mission, chart, mission card here, mission board, have the mission board. So basically, you start with your ship at the top and each turn the ship will move down, although it doesn't have to move every turn, it can stay in one uh, box and continue to do that box, although it has to do the instructions in the box. At the beginning of the mission, there's some instructions and the top of each of the missions that you follow, how many cards you get, what you'll need to do to be decorated. Um, and obviously when you've made it to the bottom, you're home safe and you must not have lost a crew member. You can have a crew member without cards because they're not dead, but as in the grizzled, um, everybody has to come back alive or, or that's not a successful mission. Then we also have what I call the plot. Now the plot basically is where the skipper runs the ship. There's a turn sequence here. Um, on the beginning of the turn sequence, the skipper can like raise or lower the submarine one depth. So you can see we have surface, periscope depth, deep depth, and crush depth. There's also the fuel count here. You would start the fuel count around here, and at the end of every turn, you move it one to show that you've used some fuel. Um, there are other ways that fuel will be used, but that's the main way. Um, there's also a map of the sub here. So people have their own places that they can go in the submarine. Um, I've just basically put those meeples on randomly, but the submarine has rear quarters, machinery room, engine room, and so on. And these are places that your crew can be. Um, I believe two of the crew actually start in the Command Information Center, the CIC. Um, the game also has a card for each person, which has a special action that the person is allowed to do, and says busy on the back when that person has taken their one action for the turn. Um, there's four of those. I wonder where the other one is. It's probably still in the bag. Then there's the actual cards, which are the crux of the game. When the submarine is um, doing its thing, whatever the thing submarines do, oh, there's the other, other one there. When the submarine is doing its thing, um, these cards are drawn and placed along the top of the plot. So if you're in a, let's say, the Bay of Biscay, I don't know if that's, that's probably out of shot, but let's say you're in the Bay of Biscay and you're doing a transit action. Um, the skipper of the submarine uh, decides the boat will be on the surface this turn. Then you move to the plot stage where you draw four cards. So I draw four cards. Um, this card has transit on it, so it counts. Um, it says aircraft, move to defend. So if this was the card that the dice chose when you roll the dice, and I'll explain how that works in a minute, um, you would have to do a defend action for your next turn, which means you cannot move down the, um, the mission card until you've like resolved that defend action and you can go back to command orders. 
So we don't want that, so I'll put it on the end. The next one is a defend action. We're not doing a defend, we're in a transit. So I'll just stick that here, face down. And if that gets drawn, gee, I was good at cutting the cards out. If that gets drawn, if that gets rolled, a nine or a 10, nothing, okay? You've just transited the, the, that C space and nothing has happened. The next one is another, <laughs> it's the same almost. We'll put that on the other end because gee, that's no good. And our fourth card, here it is. It's a patrol, which is actually what we want when we're patrolling, because this is how you find ships. But in this particular occasion, it's a nothing. So we'll just stick that there. There's always going to be one box missing because occasionally you'll be able to add another card to the plot um, using crew actions and things. Once you've done this, you roll two dice. We've rolled a seven. That would be this card. If there was something face up there, you would follow the instruction, but there isn't. So the turn is complete. You move to the cleanup stage, which means use some fuel. Everyone who was busy is now not busy. Um, people won't use their, their, um, their actions every turn, um, but when the sub gets damaged, probably there'll be a fair bit of action used. If you look at the cards, on the bottom of the cards, there's an action that, if you hold this card in your hand, um, you can take this action if you're the weapons officer, if you're the, um, the uber lieutenant. Uh, what else have we got here? Basically, on the, oh, the engineer. So there's special actions you can do with the bottom of the card. Actually, I'm not sure how balanced they are, but that's where we're sticking with them for the while. Um, so you can spend the card and do the action as part of your action, you get one action per turn. Your action could also be moving in the ship or your action could be spending a card for what's on the top. And the top of the card has a die roll modifier or a spanner. Um, and obviously a spanner removes a damage cube. So if there was a damage cube sitting here and uh, you spent your spanner, um, the cube could be removed. Once a section of the sub is flooded, people can't move through it, obviously. Two flooded sections, I think, I should have read the rules before I sat down and did this, but I think two flooded section and the boat is lost. So that's basically how the game works. If you were on a patrol action and you drew a patrol card, you would like have, maybe you would want that. So you'd put that in the middle and maybe you're lucky and you draw a second patrol card. The transit card doesn't count. So you put that there. This transit card doesn't count. No, so I'm drawing from the bottom of the deck. Someone will probably shoot me. Um, then you would roll two dice and I've rolled a seven, this card would count. It's a small convoy, draw two ships. So here are the ship tiles. They will be in a bag or, or in a, um, a cup or something. Um, and I actually, when I made the game, I researched all the ships that are in here. So if you look on the back of the tile, there's actually a bit of history about what happened. Um, all of the ships in this game got sunk at some point in World War II. And in fact, because I, live in Western Australia and I'm a bit parochial. Uh, one of the ships in the deck was actually sunk in the Indian Ocean and the survivors were brought back to Fremantle, which is our local major port, um, just down the river from Perth, where I live. So um, you would draw two ships, put them on the table. Oops, drawn a warship and drawn Cape Decision, a US ship which takes two hits to sink and will get you 51 thousand and six tons worth of tonnage. So with a warship, if you attack it, the next action in the game will always be a defend action. It will attack back unless you sink it. Um, if you decide to not attack it, um, you can just then do another patrol and look for more ships. Uh, these ships will stay here until you leave until you leave the box on the mission card. So for instance, this is a patrol um, action. That's where you would draw ships if you were lucky enough to roll dice with those cards played on the top. Uh, we probably should just have a quick look at the defend action. Um, so for instance, if a seven was rolled and this card was here and we were doing a defend action, you would be doing a defend action because yellow, uh, you've been instructed to because a warship's attacking you. Um, also, you'll notice if you're in transit and this card is the one that's acted, you've been attacked by an aircraft in transit, the next action would be a defend action. Um, this one says the crew quarters gets one hit. You would take this 
find the crew quarters, load the hits up. The first two hits are easy to repair, the second one is harder, the third one means it's unrepairable. And anyone in there basically dies. So, um, which probably means you've lost the game as well, but it's probably still worth trying to get back to port just for the, the sake of it. Um, in the game, players hold cards. These are a reflection of uh, how they're feeling, and it's also actions that they are capable of doing. Um, it's worth noting that you can swap cards if you're together in the same room, and that will flip your thing to busy. Just the person who's giving the card, not the person who's receiving it, they will still have an action. I probably should check that in the rules, anyway. Um, so, at, if you're in a room that takes a hit, like this guy was just then, they would like have to lose one of their cards. They get to choose, but they'll be down to one card. Um, if you are ever down to zero cards, you're not dead, you're just incapacitated. Let's say you're having like nervous breakdown or you're physically injured and unable to do something. So at that point, you stay where you are and you take no further part in the game until someone comes and gives you one of their cards to like rally you or like give you some medical treatment. Basically, on the, on the um, mission board here, there's four missions to do. Um, we've played through it. I have no idea if this is balanced. The first time we played it, we played two missions uh, with some friends of mine who we were playtesting at the local club. Nothing happened. We didn't get attacked. We didn't sink any ships. Um, every time we were on patrol, we rolled dice that didn't allow us to draw ships out of the bag. In the end, we got low on fuel, so we managed to make it back to port. I, I don't think we even got attacked once. And I was like, wow, that was, a, um, that was a bit of a downer. And everyone was like, oh no, that was good. Like. We're okay. So, um, how, how, how you take this, uh, I do not know. So there you go. I hope that helps people get a grasp on how Dive, Dive, Dive is meant to work. The story behind it is this. I went through a stage where I watched a lot of YouTube about the Battle of the Atlantic. Um, the submarine warfare in World War II is like an enormously interesting subject. Um, and I watch a bunch of Lindy Beige um, on YouTube who does a lot of history and he did a really wonderful history about the Western Approaches um, unit and how they worked out how to fight the U-boats. And in amongst all of this, I was like, oh, I wouldn't mind a U-boat game. At which point, my wonderful woman said to me, oh, someone at Wubba, our local game club, is um, selling a copy of The Hunters. Should we get it? So I had a look at it and it basically... It sounds like it's a remake of B-17 Queen of the Sky. And as an old Avalon Hill fan, I sort of am vaguely familiar with B-17. Um, and when I looked into it, it just looked like a bunch of tables and dice rolling. And I couldn't see a lot of decision making in the game, a lot of connection for a person. Obviously, it's more about telling a story and having an experience and less about conducting a game. I'm sure it's not quite as bad as that, but it just didn't feel like what I wanted. But then I, but I did want a game about submarines. And recently, I played Wits and Wages. And I like the mechanic of the map with the odds on it, where you basically get a question uh, and see who's closer to it. And I thought I could apply that to a card system with two dice. And that's where the plot idea came from in Dive, Dive, Dive. This is obviously, this was from a, um, a thrift shop. We call them op shops in Australia. And this must have been the, um, the family cats version of the game. But anyway, if you made it this far through the video and you found it helpful, thank you very much for your time.